what are the deadliest diseases and what is it like to die from them? This week, we're going to be talking about ALS and Huntington's disease. So these two diseases are different diseases and we will get into that in a second, but I wanted to put them together because on hospice at the end of life, both of them present very similarly. So the symptoms are a lot alike at the end of life, but how we get there is very different. So Huntington's disease is usually inherited. So it's an inherited disease that runs in the family, usually. With Huntington's disease, the main hallmark symptom is uncontrolled movements. Also with Huntington's, you have cognitive issues. So you are forgetful, you are confused intermittently, disorganized thinking from time to time. Also, a lot of symptoms are psychiatric. So there's depression, irritability, anxiety, hallucinations. Huntington's also is progressive over 10 to 30 years. So let's talk about ALS. ALS hallmark symptom is weakness. So the first thing you start seeing with ALS is someone is has generalized weakness. The progression for ALS is also much shorter than Huntington's disease. ALS is usually two to five years you see this progression. The main difference too is that you may have a lot of bodily weakness and functional decline, but cognitively you're totally aware. So they don't have any issues cognitively. Also with ALS, some psychiatric issues that can happen specifically with just ALS is like uncontrolled laughing, uncontrolled crying, and outbursts. As well with ALS, it's generally not inherited. People can inherit ALS, but generally it's not just inherited an inherited disease like Huntington's disease. Both of these diseases at the end of life, when I see them as a hospice nurse, they look very similar. So both will have a functional decline. People will not be functioning. They will need max assist for all ADLs, eating, drinking. Most people won't be walking. They won't be talking. And the main thing is they will have difficulty swallowing and difficulty breathing. So because of these symptoms of not being able to swallow, one, they're very high risk for aspiration, which can cause aspiration pneumonia. So with these patients, you never want to force feed because like I said, that can cause aspiration, which can cause aspiration pneumonia, which is a bad infection. Also with both of these diseases, I see people having trouble breathing, which can be really scary. So most people with this disease on hospice at the end of life will be heavily medicated as they should because if you feel like you can't breathe, it can be really uncomfortable. So before going on hospice with these two diseases, most people have to decide whether or not they want two things. One is a feeding tube and two is a trach, which can help them breathe better at the end of life. So the feeding tube would be placed when they can no longer swallow. The feeding tube is put in place so they can still get nutrition. People can decide to forego this and not have the feeding tube and die a natural death or they can place the feeding tube and possibly live longer because they are still able to get the nutrition. You can still come onto hospice with a feeding tube. However, you cannot be on hospice and then get a feeding tube. So a lot of times people will come onto hospice, decide they want a feeding tube, they have to come off hospice, go get the feeding tube, and then come back onto hospice. The other thing they have to think about is whether or not they'd want to have a trach placed. Having a trach placed could mean that they can be put on a machine to help them breathe. Many people do not want this, but some do. Eventually they would have to be living on a machine to help them breathe. Some people with ALS or Huntington's disease will choose to do this to prolong their life, but many, many won't. And you cannot go on to hospice while being on the breathing machine. So you can still have a trach, but you could not be on the breathing machine, which is helping you breathe. With these two diseases, you always have to look at the risk versus benefit. So with feeding tubes and trachs, there is a benefit at times, which is prolonged life, but there are also risks because they come with infection risks, pain, irritation, and they don't always work or eventually they stop working as well. So the person will still eventually die from these diseases. People just have to weigh the risk versus benefit on, on what they want to do and what they want their life to look like. This is why having conversations about these things ahead of time will help you prepare, help you know what to expect and help you tell everyone how you want to live and die with these diseases. The patients that I've worked with with these diseases on hospice usually at the end of life are palliatively sedated just so they can have their symptoms well managed. Remember to always talk to your medical provider so you know all the options that are there for you so you can live better and die better. Mm -hmm.